actually spent waiting for paint to dry than actually painting on the paper. The technique called wet on dry means you build the watercolour up in layers, but you have to wait for each layer to dry completely in between. This clock tower is perfect for building in layers. It's lit from the front with a strong shadow on the left. Watch what the brush covers on the paper in this first wash. Ultramarine blue is my first layer. It's going to paint the sky and the shadow of the building, the strong shadow on the building. Watch where this first wash goes and how much of the painting it covers. I'm using the flat brush so I can cover the area quickly. And we can use the flagpole as a useful stopping point down this side. I'm coming right over any area in shadow. So the blue of the sky is at the same time painting the shadows on the buildings. All down this side and we can also include any of the little areas which are casting a shadow beside the clock here. Oh, we can watch the time there, can't we? The shadow inside that window. In fact, that window's quite dark in there, so we can even put a bit more blue in there. So we're not just painting the sky, we're painting the sky and the shadow on the shaded side of the building. And this is the beauty of a transparent medium, that you can actually paint more than one thing at once. So you don't have to think, oh, I'm painting the sky and then painting the building. You're painting layers that build up across the painting. And the roof is catching a little bit of light, but it's still darker than the roof that side. There's quite a strong shadow on the face of the clock tower, but I'm going to leave that out because it's such a dramatic shadow, but it won't help the painting. And these little chimney pots, look at the little chimney pots, they're casting quite a strong shadow. The windows here, there's an overhang here that's casting a shadow. And actually, look, the little, these windows are quite dark in here, we can put them in. In fact, that roof is a bit dark, so we'll leave that shadow there and just under the wall there. And then the shadows inside these windows here. Ooh, so many of these. I've actually cut down the number on this face because there's just too many of them for the painting. Shadows in there. Shadow under that little gate there. And the building over here. Well, most of that behind there, we can't really see that very clearly there, can we? That little, bit, that little roof there is quite dark. And now we can come up to the flagpole and work from the other side of the clock tower. And although the actual grey of the tiles is actually darker than the blue of the sky, because it's lit, if we leave it lighter, it will feel more three-dimensional when we paint it in the next layer. So we're using now the sky to bring out the lit side of the building. It's a lovely, I mean, what a perfect day. What, this is oh, what painting's all about, isn't it? Try not to paint the paint too wet so it'll dry quickly. Oh, I've got a stray hair there. Sometimes with a new brush, hairs come out, but just they just have to settle in. Don't worry about them. Nothing wrong with the brush. And we can bring this sky right down getting a tiny bit lighter as it comes down, but it's such a strong, beautiful blue. And now we have to wait for that layer to dry. And that's where time is spent. As soon as you've got to wait for paint to dry, it does take longer than if you work wet and wet. So, let's watch the river.
The next layer is the colour of the red brick building and I'm going to use burnt sienna and a little bit of permanent rose just to pink it up because it's actually a very warm, lovely red colour. And this now comes all the way over anything that is the red brick, leaving out the white that's around the windows, straight over all the areas that aren't white because where white is in shadow it can carry the blue. The blue is the perfect colour for white in shadow. So all these little windows are rimmed by the stone so that we leave as blue. And you haven't got time in 10 minutes to be too careful so just go as quickly as you can doesn't matter if you overpaint areas that aren't the right colour don't forget you're just trying to get an impression trying to get something out in 10 minutes you haven't got long but the beauty is that you can just swoosh over the layers underneath it's a really lovely design this building I'm actually going to take the colour up the side of this clock tower, just, but much paler, so that it is darker than the sky. And right across the lit fascia, I've put a tiny dash of permanent rose in with the burnt sienna, just because it's such a warm red brick. Just feels like it needs a little bit more pinking up. And I'm using the round brush for this because we've got all these shapes to come round. And we can come across all the red brick here, all the red brick. leaving out that bit of the wall there. All this lovely red brick in shadow. Chimney. And do you see how the shadow now, the blue of the sky is creating the shadow on the red brick. And now let's make the grey. The grey, if we mix the burnt sienna with the ultramarine blue, we get a lovely bluey grey. So now we can continue that for the dark side of the roof. And the bigger the brush we use, the quicker we can go to these windows. This combination of burnt sienna and blue, it makes a really nice dark, so we can pick out the darkness in these windows. Darkness of this roof, a bit more water. We can even, with the tip of this brush, paint the little, paint the little rail at the top there. And now we can bring this colour over the lit side of the roof because we're getting our three dimension from the blue of the sky under there and slightly lighter grey for the colour of the roofs. slightly lighter on the other side and the beauty of two colours is that you can vary slightly the wash so that each grey is just very slightly different from the other and in the shadow side we need a bit more darkness under here in these doors under here. Oh, I'm not looking at the clock tower, we're running out of time. All these little features just slightly darker 
version of the same colour. The clock, the time in the clock. Oh, I could do with my little rigger for that, couldn't I? Really fine line. Well, it was nine o'clock when I started, so let's put a little nine there. You can hardly see it, it's just a fine feature in there. Back to the point of our brush, and just we're capturing any of the areas on this side that just need a little bit more strength in their shadow. But we haven't got much time, so we can't really do much more. We just need to bring out the blue in these lovely windows here. There's some lovely detail under here, but we haven't got time for that. Just, we can't put everything in if in 10 minutes, you can't do everything. And then the green, we just, oh, it's quite a dirty sort of winter green, but just a little bit of yellow with the blue to bring out the foliage in the foreground here. And the bigger the brush we use, the quicker we can go. So don't be afraid of using big brushes. If you don't use a big brush, then you've got to actually just work smaller because you can't physically cover the painter quick enough if you're trying to paint in 10 minutes. And I think we can call that a day. We just catch the, the difference in this, this little um, archway over here from the other uh, side of the building. And then just so that we can see that this goes behind that building there. And then we'll just make the footpath appear of this beside the canal. So we'll just run something in along the bottom there for the canal wall. And I think, unfortunately, we have to stop because we've run out of time. Angular subjects like this obviously lend themselves to wet and dry technique because you can get nice crisp edges. So don't use your paint too wet so that you can limit the drying time to as short as possible.